Hey everyone, and welcome to Commander Cast episode 303, where your weekly source for community strategy and technology, hosted on CommanderSociety.com and our home site, CommanderCast.com. This week we have a guest, Mike. What's up, Mike? Hello, everybody. I'm Mike. I'm from Canada, and I love magic. Sweet. Uh, and of course, we always have Adam too. What's going on? Adam? Wow, you sounded like let down. <laughs> That's not. That wasn't my intention. I, mean, Jesus, like, I don't. That wasn't. Like, that, and of course. And of guy. course. <laughs> okay. We got the special person, and then the regular person. <laughs> right. Exactly. Jeez. That was not my intention. Apparently, I have to up my game. No, it's I fine. Guess. I understand you can, you can where I fall. To Canada. <laughs> can move to Canada. I don't know. You guys are getting selective these days. You know? <laughs> yeah, there, there has, I'm sure, been an uptick in immigration going north lately. Uh, uh, our, our, our immigration website for the government crashed after um, your president got elected. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> nope. There seems to be some correlation. <laughs> I wonder. Hmm. I, I'm not sure why. It might have been a fluke, but uh, that actually happened. Yeah. A couple days in a row, I think. Yeah, that's uh, that makes sense. I mean, it also makes for a good segue because speaking of epic trolls, um, there's some other stuff that went on in uh, the magic community this week, folks. I'm not going to go over it because we talked about it last week, and it's it's out there for anyone who wants to. I just wanted to throw a little love Commanderin's way. Not that they really need me to do this, um, but there's a really great episode this week uh, where they had on Adrian Reynolds, who's a magic ethnographer. So she's a trained anthropologist who sp- who focuses on the society that is magic, um, and she got on there to talk about it and talk about all the you know all the uh, the controversy that's been happening recently. It's a great episode. I'm not going to go into it, but just to say that uh, it was really worth a listen. Not their typical fare, and they admitted that too. Because I mean, how often do you find a magic ethnographer? I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, yeah. Yeah, but very cool listen. So definitely, if you guys are, are up for that, go for it. Uh, but as far as we're concerned, this week we're going to talk about some banding this week. Because Commander Cast is nothing if not the home of weird, obscure, old mechanics. So, man, if that is your jam, people, you have come to the right spot. So <laughs> if you liked if you liked flanking, just like turn it up to 11 and then just stick around for us. Um, this week, keep up with the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. And then stick with us after the break when we come back with community and talk about how banding works. Yay, interstitial. I got some Rampage cards in here, too. <laughs> there, I feel like Rampage has to be the next thing we do. Rampage right? is pretty sweet, actually. I like Rampage. <laughs> well, I was I was digging through the, my cards, and, and I'm seeing all this old stuff, and, and all of a sudden, all these Rampage cards show up. And I'm like, that actually can work with banding, because I can keep the Rampager alive. Yep. <laughs> sure. It's like, okay, whatever. They're going in the deck. I feel like if you're in for a penny with banding, you're in for a pound with Rampage. You know, I, I just I feel like the two have to go together. Somehow flanking probably works its way in there a little bit, too. Um, uh, Bushido. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Like if you could just like put all those into one deck, I think you win. Like I, you, you just win EDH. <laughs> so that's, that's I it. did. I played. I played with all the worst cards I could find <laughs> yeah. in my binder. You like next level. Like you disappear. You apparate out of your robe like fucking Obi Wan in Star Wars, and you just become a Force Ghost. So yeah. like I think that's just what happens. So this this is good. This is good. <laughs> Alrighty, folks, in community this week, uh, we're going to talk about how banding works and why EH players love them, some old crappy mechanics. So, uh, without further ado, um, Adam, do you want to, we talked about banding, when are we going to do the rules thing for that? Do you want to do that up at yeah, the top here? Yeah, talk about it now. Why Might not? as well, because I need All to right. figure out how banding works. So. Okay, so it has a lot of rules to it, but they're pretty simple. Okay, uh, so... Banding, if anybody wants to look it up, is covered in the comprehensive rule books under 702.21. Uh, and then it's what? A through M. 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 Yep. Yeah. Uh, sure. So there's, yeah. there's Not a lot complicated to it. at all. Yeah, um, you're good. Here's, here's the basic. So there's banding, and then there's banding with others. Banding with others is a little bit more complicated, but it's more or less the same thing. All right. So banding is a combat ability, more or less. When attacking, Let's, let's start with the attacking. When attacking, you can have any number of creatures with banding and one additional non-banding creature attack as a band 
which you can call a group or a platoon or what, you know, whatever you want. They attack as one group or, or as one entity, essentially. Okay. I'm going to change all my cards to say platooning. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I'm going to care more. Sorry, I'm gonna have one of them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, platoon really doesn't get its day as a verb often enough. It really doesn't. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, so, so they attack as a group. All right. I'll deal with the combat damage later. All right. <laughs> blocking. All right. <laughs> when you're blocking and you have creatures with banding, you only need one creature with banding to band together with any number of other creatures that you have. And they can well, then block would, as a group. I, I would like to interject here. Yes, please. That if you have a creature with banding, you can block with only that creature and still gain all the bonuses of having a band. I think that's how it ends up playing out in the combat damage, right? But it's technically you have to band with the other creatures, and then that one is the only one that has to take combat damage? Uh, I don't think so. The way I was reading it yesterday was that um, I think it's in seven point or 702.21J. All right. During the combat damage step, if an attacking creature is blocked by a creature with banding, and that's where I turned my brain off and said, <laughs> okay, I have a creature with banding, and he's blocking. Yes. And so once I read that, I I used that as my argument that I have now used banding creatures to block. I gain control of the combat damage math step. Yeah. Oh, oh I see. Yes. Well, yes, that is correct. Now, you get if, all the abilities of all your other creatures. No, but... Um, when it comes to stuff like trample, which I hope we get to talk about, yeah. this becomes super important uh, because yeah. now I can I can tell you as the attacking player that you're going to take all of your trample damage and stick it onto this one guy, as opposed to taking trample damage and assigning lethal and having the rest run over onto me. Right, because technically you're only if you're the one controlling the damage, you're only yeah. required to put lethal damage onto the to mark lethal damage on the creature. However, yeah. you can choose to put more than lethal damage on the creature. It's just kind of redundant in most cases. Exactly. Um, yeah. It's just one of those little known combat things that I think this is what makes to me banding super powerful. Yeah. Uh, so let's actually get into the, so, so the, those are the basics of just attacking and blocking as bands, but let's get into the combat damage because that's when banding gets really interesting. All right. So if I'm attacking with a band, right? Normally, when I attack with a creature and uh, you block with one or more creatures, I assign my combat damage to your creatures, you assign your combat damage to my creature. Okay. In the case of the banding, I assign the combat damage that is dealt by both sets of creatures however I want as the attacking player. Okay. So my band, I get to deal it to the defending creatures however I want. Your damage that you have that is allocated, I get to deal to my band any number of damage I want to any number of those creatures. And this is perfect for dumping all your combat damage onto, like, tokens. Yeah, your 1-1 one, one or something. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so you can definitely, I mean, if you have a way to kind of overrun it, you know, you're going to be able to get a lot of damage through. Um, Boros Reckoner, here's a, here's a good one for him to be part of a band with, because now you can just... Stick a couple on him. So all your attack phases, you're dealing damage straight to whatever you want. Right. Uh, so then also blocking. So when you're blocking with your band, normally as the blocking player, the non-active player, you are not the one who assigns damage to your creatures. In this case, you are. So again, having one banding creature with like a whole bunch of tokens, you know, you can block with 50 tokens and they don't get to take their 8-8 eight, eight and knock out 80 or tokens, you can say, okay, all of that 8 damage goes to this one token. The rest are blocking, dealing lethal to your creature. So you get to control the combat math on, on both damage steps, essentially. Um, and that's more or less it, as far as like the complexity of banding. Um, the banding with other banding is, with others, yeah, that's different. <laughs> that's a little bit different, yeah. Yes. But it's, it, it, it gives you all the same bonuses to the combat math. Yes. Um, uh, from, and banding with others is the only the only mechanic that I found on the storm scale 
that has an 11 out of 10. <laughs> Not jokingly. <laughs> the way I read banding with others is that if you have, a, I think, um, I don't know, let's say a camel that has banding with other camels. Yeah. You can take that one camel and glue him onto any other number of camels. That's the way I read that. That is more or less how I read it as well. Yeah, so that that makes um, your camels very powerful. Yes. Well, yes. Th- that that might be the first time that sentence has ever been uttered. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the banding with others. Yeah. So, so um, like there there aren't a whole lot of creatures that have banding with others, uh, but you do have some of the old. Uh, legends lands that say like your green legends have banding with other what is it legends or yeah legends? Uh, yeah any green legends have banding with other legends so they don't even need to be green legends you can ban right exactly any other yeah. color yeah so if you have any green legend that automatically has banding with any other legendary creature that you have yeah um but only with them which is weird. Uh, again, banding with others is is the eleven on the storm scale. Banding is only a nine, so we might actually see it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, they reprinted Storm in a dual deck that was sold at mall <laughs> at Walmart. <laughs> well, they had uh, what's that? The new um, Magus of Desire, I think it was from the new Commander set that basically he's a Storm yeah, uh, Mind's Sir Mind's Desire stick. stick. Yeah. 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 I don't think you're going to see banding again because we've been talking about this now for 10 minutes and I bet you most of the people that are listening are still not clear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, j- just as the, the person who's still not a little clear, has you ever been in a room with two lawyers when they start talking? Like, I remember this specifically like when I bought a house, you know, and like they, they just kind of, you're sitting there and you're nodding your head and you're like, I caught like one every other five words. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm pretty, oh. I know enough to like sign of the dotted line. I'm pretty sure, you know, but I'm like, don't, like, don't quiz me afterwards. I think that's where I'm at. Um, but I'm glad this is interesting. <laughs> like, I'm glad this is like interesting in the sense that like that someone wants to take the time to make this work, which is the the segue into the thing I was going to ask you guys at the top of the show. Like, why did you come back to banding? Like, what is it about this mechanic that decide that Mike made you like? Oh man, I got to build around this. Well, well exactly well, what you just said yeah, there say. is that you you have listened to us talk about it and you still aren't clear on it. So <laughs> for me. That means that if I put this into a deck, I'm gaining an advantage over you because I know how it works and I'll be able to, to see, you know, the board state, um, how it's going to reflect my banding and you're not going to be able to comprehend that properly. So you're going to make mistakes as I'm attacking or as I'm blocking, you're going to make these mistakes. Now in casual games, I'm going to let you take it back, but if it's the, eighth game of the day and we're at that point where everybody's a just as salty enough to not allow take backs <laughs> and it's going to come into play right and so I, I play a lot of magic like this where I try to make sure that I have a little bit more knowledge about the game than my opponents do I like that. I like the old man advantage because you have to press that, I think. Like when you pull out the ice cauldron and I just, I love doing that. When other yeah. players, you can see other players' eyes glaze over at the text box and you're like, yep. huh? Like, all right. I can, I can get behind that. Well, so um, Mark, here's what I don't get. Okay. <laughs> that you'll advocate for ice cauldron. Which is actually <laughs> bad. Which is actually bad and complicated. Whereas <laughs> banding is mildly good. And complicated. Okay, who doesn't like like storming up a, a a fireball that you probably could have done six other ways more effectively and efficiently? Right. Come on, who doesn't <laughs> like doing that, man? Come on now. Um, I mean, for the same reason, I think is because it, you know, just like Mike said, like you do have an advantage just because you know the game or you know that particular niche a little bit better. Like you're just working the angles better. If I'm if I'm hearing you right, Mike. You know, like yeah. This is a particular um, a- angle of the game that, like, because you've been around long enough and because you've taken the time to really work through the rules, A through M, <laughs> um, yeah. and figure out how banding works, like, yeah, you can eke out a win here and there. I like that. Well, you're basically picking the, the, the battleground that you're going to fight this fight on, right? You know, and if, if we were generals in a war and I had the opportunity to pick where we were fighting, I would pick the place that's going to be to my advantage. And so... 
I do the same thing with magic is I find the mechanics that, yeah, maybe they're old and crappy, but they give me that slight advantage over somebody else. Like, like flanking. <laughs> flanking, I actually built a Jund tribal knights deck that See? was straight flanking, and it <laughs> didn't do too bad. You okay. Know? I like it. Okay. So there was one other thing that I wanted to cover with banding before we, we get, cause, cause I agree with everything that Mike said about, you know, why use it. Uh, and those reasons on top of the fact that honestly, I don't think it's very bad. Um, but the other thing that we have to talk about because the w- way that we explained it so far, it sounds like, Oh, I'm attacking with a band. So, Oh, my bird has flying. So, and banding. So they're all going to attack as a flying band. No, no. <laughs> that is not how that works. <laughs> no, if you want that effect, you play the new Audric. You know, right, so exactly. All your creatures get all everybody else's abilities, which right. not a bad deck to work with, or not a bad card for a banding deck. No, it should definitely be in there. But yeah, the, basically the way this works is if any creature in the band can be blocked, then the band gets blocked. Also, yes. same thing as like with Trample. Just because one of your banding creatures has Trample doesn't mean all the damage from the banding gets Trample. No, only just the, that guy's. Yeah, only that guy's amount of damage gets trampled. Now, if you have already dealt lethal to the creature with the other banding creatures, then you can trample over all of that damage. Or oh, you nuts. can give all of your banding creatures trample, which that's the optimal way to do it. Um, so I just wanted to add that, that one little caveat. But yeah, to, to jump off of what Mike was saying about like why, why to play with this. Um, yeah, everything, everything that he said is kind of in, in my wheelhouse of like, well, let's take this thing that everybody thinks is crappy and see if you can break it. Like, you know, see, see if you can exploit it in a way that your opponents are just not going to know how to handle it in any way, shape, or form. That right. sounds amazing. Yeah. All right. So cool. now, yeah, you can bring it back to that. So I think uh, EDH players in general, if they're still working their way around banding, you know, as a mechanic, or if they're newer, they don't know what the heck that is. You know, I think that that idea is kind of core to like what makes Commander Commander. You know, like just seeing if you can do the weird thing you wanted to do yeah. in old standard or something and make it work in hundred card singleton. So that makes sense. Well, I think last week you guys were talking about magic being needlessly complicated, weren't you? Or was yeah. that some? Yeah. Okay. Probably. So. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that was one of the articles I think I had uh, I had put in the the community segment. When we were talking about it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So here we have an example of magic being needlessly complicated. But you know, if if you're the one that masters that complication, you're 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 up on everybody else. I, yeah. I don't have any friends who are going to sit down and take the time to learn about banding. I when I had that <laughs> judge sitting beside me yesterday. Um, before he found out the deck I was playing, I was like, Hey, I've got a question. So he walks over and he looks down at my Benelish hero and he's like, yeah. Banding, see you later. And he walked away. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> no, dude, come back. I, I have a question. I'll ask you the question in a way that doesn't involve banding. <laughs> he's just like, Oh, Jesus. All right. Fine. So he came over and I explained my question. And then, you know, after he gave an answer, I, I applied it to the banding, but. Yeah, here's a judge. This guy doesn't. No, he's like, no, fuck that. That's the best. I'm out. The best. <laughs> yeah. There we go. All right. There. If you ever anyone needed a reason to play banding, I'm on board now. So, <laughs> yeah. like, the mechanic that makes judges go, oh, fuck that. Yeah. Yeah. Now, <laughs> the other thing I like about playing old mechanics is, like you said, I'm, I've been playing for a long time. I started playing in um, the dark. So I've been around for a while, and when we were in high school, these are the cards that we had to play with. Yeah. And and so for me, when I got into EDH at first, it was oh here I get to play I get to play all these really old cool things that I can't play in standard now, and and so now I, I go back and I look at these old mechanics, and to me it's it's I don't know reliving my heyday of Magic. Yeah, the nostalgia is real. I mean, I'll, I'll be I'll be perfectly honest. The nostalgia is. Uh, something that I really like going back to those old cards. The, the real unfortunate piece to me is that banning probably will never see print again. Uh, uh, and that there are a lot of, you know, most of the creatures and cards with banding are pretty crappy by today's standards, also, but they yeah. do have banding on them. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's unfortunate that, you know, we won't see like a more, uh, you know, a more recent iteration of like modern design using an old mechanic. I would love to see that. Well, if you look at the cards, and, and yeah, they're crappy by today's standards, but even that's an advantage 
because people look at these things and they're like, oh, you played a 1-1 one, one for yeah. one that has a mechanic that I don't understand. I'm not going to waste spot removal on that thing, which now you've got a creature, right? Like, you, yeah. You, these things sneak under the wire, and I think a lot of games of EDH are won by slipping under the wire. Nobody notices it, and then all of a sudden it comes out of nowhere, and by then it's too late. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the mechanic of, like, slowly pull the knife out from under the table and then <laughs> and then sink it home at the right moment. Yeah, I can totally get behind that, too. And that totally does work, right? Like, that's how, I don't know, That's if, if I pull a win out, that's probably how I'm doing it. Because someone's looking over the table, like, oh, Mark's fucking around with counters. Like, who cares? Like, you know, let's play a real <laughs> game. And then finally, like, why? You had that shit in your back pocket? Okay, fine. Yeah, I, I get, we'll shuffle up and do another game, you know? Right, yeah. Um, and I, I like the idea that, like, that 1-1 one, one with banding, like, pulls the day you know like you're just like yeah i don't know that was like his shining moment so uh. yeah i won i won a game yesterday where um i'm playing against a guy i've got boros reckoners on the table and i've got uh timber wolves so that's a one one with banding and sure enough um the guy across from me swings with 36 36 throw mock with trample so i put the two of them together i banded the uh boros reckoner and now i've got the combat damage step to make up my mind what I want to do with it. He's just laughing. He's like, so what? I still get 33 damage through your Reckoner. I said, no, you don't. You get nothing through. It all hits the Reckoner, and it all goes back into your face, and I win the game. Yeah. And his jaw just dropped. He's like, I don't understand this. (laughs) (laughs) Was there imminent table flipping after that? I would imagine. (laughs) No, he's a pretty relaxed guy, so he he put that deck away, and he went out and got, uh, he got a different deck to play with. Which is which is good. I didn't want him to flip all my shitty cards onto the floor. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, that's also an advantage of banding, right? Like if they flip yeah, over the table and you, <laughs> they flip over your timber wolves, like eh, yeah, fuck it, I can. Yeah, yeah your your entire deck costs ten dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. All right, um, any last uh, last things we want to uh, talk about before we uh, move on with community? This is a really good reason you guys have you guys have flipped me. How about that? You have persuaded me that I need to go and, and mess with banding. I'm still firmly on the anti flanking train, but. I'm I'm down with banding now. I'm so. telling you, you, I, yeah, we you couldn't we it, couldn't gang up on you during that. <laughs> yeah, you you make a you make a Jund Knights flanking deck, and and you'll feel you'll feel the power of a bunch of shitty tutus. Man, yeah. I like I Mike. I like two out of three of those words in that deck. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just it's just the last one. It's kind of a sticking point. But you know, all right. I mean, hey, you, you convinced me on the banding thing. So um, right. <laughs> the, uh, the qu- really quickly, Adam, did you add in that YouTube link at the top? I did. So yeah, um, it's it's from uh, Cool Stuff Inc. They have a, a series called Judges Corner that David Green, he's actually a local level two judge, um, does, and he basically explains banding. It's probably like a five seven minute video and they have like actual combat examples and things like that so uh if somebody still doesn't understand it that's that's a good resource to uh understand how flanking functions there we go i will be watching that right after the show so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um but without further ado folks stick around in strategy where i can get schooled on uh some best banding strategies so stick with us after the break All right. See, look, I'm I'm taking off the snarky comment that I put in the, in the notes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> see, there we go. I have I have stricken it from the record, gentlemen. So there we are. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, it's not like it's not warranted. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, I would still stay. I would still stand by it if it was flanking. But you you had me at uh, you know throw the throw mock damage right back in their face. So. That's I think that the banding, I mean, if, you, if you're going to throw it into a deck as a one-off or, you know, maybe you've got one or two things in there, that's perfect. To build an entire deck of round banding, that's retarded. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, then, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't sugarcoat it, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, if it's, um, if you're doing something where you got an artifact that's going to be able to give your guys banding or you're, or it's a, you're going to use a combat trick where you can throw banding on a guy for a second. 
that's not a bad idea. Yeah, agreed. That that's kind of where I came to when I started looking at all the the banding cards. Like most of the creatures are pretty meh, but if you know some of the artifacts that give it to to different things, or you know maybe a token generator that that like creates little banding dudes, or a uh, you know just combat instant kind of thing yeah they're, sure. those are playable i mean yeah, i like I, those those old legend lands you know the colored banding lands like that sounds like a cool idea i would i would mess around with that i would throw that in the deck if it had a lot of legends in it you know i bought uh i bought the three that i needed for the cycle and i put chromatic lantern in so yeah, oh, they're, cool. sh- yeah they're shit when they come out but when chromatic lantern hits now they tap for mana right sweet right so what's that oh i didn't say anything no. no. Um, yeah, that's an I. That's a cool idea. Like, I would like to try that out. I think I still have a couple of. Those, I know I must have a couple of those lands kicking around somewhere. Um, so it's just a matter of like throwing them in a deck and seeing what lands. You know, right? Um, oh, it's the, funny. When I built the, the deck, I built it uh, Naya, and I opened up my old binder, and I've got the blue and the black ones. And I'm like, good, great. <laughs> now I actually have to pay money for this. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what those things. I I got to see what those things cost. They're only like a dollar. Oh. Fifty-two dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the most expensive one cost me three bucks. Yeah, I think. I think that was the green one. Yeah, some of them are even fifty cents. So, I mean, hey, I was surprised like that. Urza's Avenger was above a dollar. So, I mean, not but for this, the fourth and fifth, but for the Antiquities Edition, it's like three bucks. So, this like, is why you go and you pick up your Teleria now, people, because first of all, you're a blue player, <laughs> and second of all, it's Teleria. Second, uh, third of all. It makes things lose banding. Oh, uh, I, I use the herb work, the one that makes them lose swamp walk. That's an actual I actually, card. In I, do, I do use that card actually. Yeah, I yeah. I legit have a copy of that card too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that is bad art that I can get behind too. So that's like some bad trapper keeper art. Oh well. really? I mean, hey, the originals, you know, still sub five bucks, so we're good. Yeah. You know, it's a thing. Um, also removes first strike. Which actually yeah. was I rem- I can't remember what game or when this was, but that became a relevant ability at one point. Um, anyway, that was probably the only time that lane has ever been fucking relevant. <laughs> uh, I actually I, I run it in a Loro deck, and I use Dismiss into Dreams, so I just target your creature and remove its Swamp Walk ability, and then remove it from the battlefield. That's amazing! Oh, that's so dope! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> and you that doesn't even hilarious. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's funny because yeah, it'll fit, and I got it in my binder, so I might actually make that switch once we're done. Oh <laughs> shit! You know, I could throw that into um, what's that four four spirit from Kamigawa that destroys a uh, any targeted creature? I could throw oh, it that fucking down. Oh, Hikori. Yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. I, I'm yeah. I'm back onto the Legend Lands. There we go. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got me a YouTube video and a I don't know a TCG yeah, player. I about that Card. interaction it's pretty amazing now that i think about there, it. there we go all right we got we got some good stuff all right um let's let's hop into strategy and get there all right All right, folks, fresh off of our community with the lengthy explanation of the banding rules, um, let us talk about the best banding strategy, folks. So now we've got the rules down. We all know we've been schooled. We watched the videos. We came back. We have our little certificate from banding you. Um, What is the best strategy you can use with banding to make it uh, as efficient as possible with this inefficient mechanic? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, For me, it's put it on... Put banding on to some of your um, indestructible dudes. Yeah. Like when you look at Stuffy Doll or uh, Dark Steel Mirror, they're both zero ones. So that those are garbage cards. You're not going to be able to do too much. <laughs> but if you stick that with a banding guy, now you can um, use that to soak up all the damage and keep your your strong attackers or your strong blockers from getting the shit beaten out of them. Yeah, agreed. Um, I I think that well, the conclusion that I came to, like, I don't love banding for attacking purposes. Though, if if you've designed your deck to do so, then it can absolutely do it. But uh, I like just having because you only need one bander 
in the entire band for blocking that banding as blocking is just, I mean, all it does is things in your favor. That's it. It just yep. makes your blocks infinitely better. This sounds almost like, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, because you guys have played with this mechanic way more than I have, uh, and much more recently, too. Uh, this sounds like the almost the perfect pillow fort strategy, or I should say, in addition to a pillow fort strategy. I think if you're, like, pillow um, fort wide, you know, like, you've got tokens. I think if you're, it, well, it depends. Like, if you've got the pillow fort going and you've got a ton of tokens and it's hard for them to attack you because you've got, like, ghostly prison and stuff like that, banding might just be too much. Like on top of that, but <laughs> just, yeah. if you're if you're playing a regular deck where you're not pillow fording, but you just need that extra little bit, throw a banding card in there, and then you'll you'll be okay. Like there's a there's an instant that gives your guys banding, yeah. So you can you can declare your attackers, and and your guy your opponent thinks, oh, all my trample damage is going through. Well, just throw banding on your dude and shit on his parade, yeah. Right. And a lot of times people will overcommit like that, thinking that they've got the advantage. And once you combat trick them, now all of a sudden you're back in the driver's seat. Huh. Uh, That's just the way I looked at it. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah, uh, Formation was the card that gives banding, right? Uh, yes, the, instant? the, the ostrich. Yeah. Yeah, the yes. snow ostriches. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Nothing more deadly than a snow. No one ever expects a snow ostrich. Um, yeah. And it's that's a cantrip, a too. Trick and a half, right? Yeah, so that, that that's a thing. Um, very cool. I mean, you can also get, I, I suppose, worth noting, like if you're going the knight route, you can you can play Errand of Duty and get a knight with 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 token with banding. So oh, I totally forgot about that one. <laughs> that's a that's a oh I only I mean it's not like I fucking knew about it. I mean this is the internet at work right here. But uh, yeah, since there are two instants that have the word banding on them, um, that's a cool little thing. Um, that yeah. Now, Oh, go ahead. I mean, Adam. The other thing that I think that you know, if if you are going to do the like actually like banding deck, I think I think using, I think what I came to was like a uh, oh god, what's it called? Abzan. Like Abzan seemed like it was the the way to do it because you can you can use Audric, you can use Majestic Matriarch, uh, you can use what is it, Soul Flare, and the Changeling dude, so that all of your creatures are going to share all like keyword abilities, you know. Banding is not going to be one of them, but you can have some banding creatures in there that allow your entire band to attack with, like, flying and trample and this and that. So that you're really just, like, going wide and then attacking with one giant thing they can't do anything about. Huh. Hmm. I went I went with more of a, a Naya build because mm. I wanted to use, um, I wanted to use Squee. <laughs> oh. that's, that's pretty cute. cute. I like it. Dumping, dumping the damage onto Squee, and then he just keeps coming back. Pretty good. Pretty good. Um, now I have a thing where I try to jam Squee into as many decks as I possibly can. Um, I think he's the real hero of Magic. I mean, he is the Nabob. <laughs> he is. So that is important. But yeah, I mean, I I don't think that there is a per se banding strategy. I mean, you could go in the direction of some of what Mike said, like you could definitely build a not completely banding centric deck, but like, you know, the Boros Reckoners, the Spite Mares, the, you know, things like that can definitely be utilized. But I, I think that it works better as just a few, like kind of sprinkled in like formation and things like that. Um, rather than a complete build around. Yeah. Hundred percent. Like, there's. I think when you're building a deck, if you do a complete build around, you are hamstringing yourself yeah. because you're going to make suboptimal card choices just in order to get that extra flavor win. Right. And I know that when I'm sitting down at a table with my buddies, they don't give a shit that I spent three hours researching how many unicorns there are in Magic. You know. If they're winning every single game, they're not going to yeah. take me out afterwards and buy me a beer for my tenacity with trying to make a unicorn deck work. You know what, man? I will. I appreciate that. Because <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I appreciate the three hours of research. <laughs> yeah. Well, with the unsets being released and everybody is like, oh, let's play Uncommander, I thought about making a, a unicorn deck since it has the 
the un at the beginning of it, and then after researching unicorns for a while, I was like, "This is not probably fun. real bad." I'm gonna waste my life. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. I'm glad you only came to it after like hours of research. So I'm like, <laughs> well, like, you know, yeah. you gotta you gotta really dig deep and and see if it's worth it, and it's not. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Sometimes you go down that hole, and you're just like, nope, mm-mm. no, you yeah, gotta turn yeah. back. So. I appreciate that too. Um, so I, I guess like, would you guys recommend if you, if someone wants to try banding, right? Like I am a banding neophyte. Uh, if I just want to try banding, like throw in a banding creature and see if you can mess with combat math, like maybe one or two. Like again, we talked about don't, like it is a, a, a pyrrhic victory to try and like build an entire banding deck. Like you're not going to get there with that. I, w- uh, I wouldn't say to build, to put in a banding creature. I would say to put in something that is either a banding combat trick or something that can repeatedly give banding. Yeah. Right? Like an artifact. Like some of the things that we'll talk in technology. Um, I, w- I would definitely do that before I would look for it. Because most of the banding creatures, I mean, just being completely honest, most of the banding creatures are garbage. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hot trash. Yep. I mean, we're, know, I think we're all... You're, you're two fours for fours and you're one ones for one. And so, you know, that are just not really a value. <laughs> But if they, if you can find ways to give stuff banding in a deck, absolutely. I, I think it's worth, at the very least, tinkering with if you have an understanding of how it works, especially if you have more of an understanding of how it works than most people. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. And if you're going to do that, I mean, there's two artifacts that do it. it yeah. Those will slot into any deck. So yeah. I, um, for the 75 cents it might cost you to buy those two cards... Now you can try it out, and if it doesn't work, you really didn't waste anything. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about stuff like like Baton of Morale, like that we kind are. of thing? Oh, that's the best one. But then there's, <laughs> that's there's a sentence that's never been uttered. Yep. Helm of Chibalula. <laughs> yeah, that one. Helm of Chizuk or whatever it is. Oh, it's Jesus. got the most terrifying art on the front. It is the scariest helmet I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, seriously, yeah. no one's wearing that fucking helmet. No. If that's... I go into battle with that fucking thing on, I win. Because <laughs> you're going to leave. You're just going to get out. Also true. But, you know, it's if it's a one drop, and it's uh, you pay one and tap it to give your guy banding. So you leave one up. That's it. All, it's all it takes. And if you don't like how it works, you didn't lose anything. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, speaking of someone who still has like revised editions of Helm of Chapter or whatever the, whatever the fuck it is, uh, I think out. that's the only. That's the. Uh, I don't think they printed that in fourth. And surprisingly, I'm looking at it now. They printed the shit out of Helm of Chapter from everything no from Alpha to Fifth. I kid yeah. you not. Yeah, yeah that sounds right. <laughs> I mean, wow. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't completely give up on banding until after <laughs> Fifth Edition. I think. I mean, it was actually like a pretty big mechanic. In what Ice Age block, right? Ice Age and Alliances. It did come back in, uh, in Ice Age, I think. Yeah. Um, came but, back a bit in Ice Age. It was also in Weatherlight too. No, did it go as far as Weatherlight? Man. Yeah, Weatherlight's wow. the last printed set that it was in. That's crazy. Um, Whoa! But can you imagine being the guy at, at Wizards who's got the big banding heart on, and he's like, "Come on, man, let's put some <laughs> more of these in," and everybody's like, "Fuck <laughs> off, Bob! You're yeah. gonna get fired if you keep talking like that." <laughs> Yeah. I mean, okay, like I, I still remember to this day cracking the pack and getting Helm of Chatsuk as my rare and being like, what the fuck? You know? How, <laughs> so, how did yeah. you not quit magic at that time? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Like that, that came with Homelands. So, um, <laughs> but I mean, I, I can also see like, as I'm looking at the 13 cards that aren't creatures that have something with banding on them in magic, um, I guess I might try out like fortified area in my walls deck. It just gives all walls banning yeah. and plus one plus oh. I'm like, okay, maybe. Well, I mean, if you if you do have a legit walls deck, that's not a bad idea because yeah. people are going to run at you with tramplers anyways. So why not make your walls work just a little bit better? Yeah, yeah. and there's a wall with banding too. That's true. Yeah, I think that's a that's actually um, an artifact too. What is it? Um, wall of shields is a banding wall. Um, this yeah. is not coming off the top of my head, folks. Just letting people know. It's like I, I am I am looking at magiccards.info at this moment with that search on. So not like I'm pulling the fucking banding shit out the top of my ass. Although I did I did notice I will shit on Phil Folio all day long, but I like cooperation's art. 
So no, my God. And that was an Ice Age, and that's that. I just not a good. That's not a, a recommendation on this, but I do like that art. I don't that might know. be like his worst art. Why? Why? Why do you like that? I just think it's so fucking ridiculous. Like it's just I don't know. Like the the guy yeah. with the the weird skull guy with the the bad teeth. Like I don't know. They're they're so happy in that. I don't know. And for some yeah. reason, his staff has eyes. Like, I kind of dig that, too. Like, I don't know what the fuck's going on in that art, but I don't know. It's like when you're at a house party and, and the jocks and the nerds all do mushrooms together and then everybody's <laughs> all happy, happy at the end of it. But <laughs> I don't know. It's really, yeah, I wouldn't hang that on my wall. Oh, no. I mean, it's Phil Foley art. It's like, <laughs> that, that is an ankle high um, that is an ankle high bar to cross when I'm talking about good Phil Foley art. But whatever. This, this one at least doesn't make me sad to look at. Um and it, like I can't say for most of the other art, like although I will say I do give formation the nod for snow ostriches, but yeah. Um, well, absolutely. here's here's what you should put in your in your walls deck. It's the wall of caltrops. Oh, there you go. Saw absolutely. that one. That yeah. yep. that looks dangerous. Yeah, I'll... that gives all your guys banding. Okay. Oh no, just this one, just uh, this one. But it's yeah, odds it's only if no other non walls. Right. It's yeah. a weird card. <laughs> <laughs> you don't say <laughs> when well, we're I mean, down the band well. and it makes it more complicated honestly <laughs> oh good it's yeah. like they ran the translation through banding through a bunch of different languages and then brought it all back to english at the end and it just <laughs> none of the card makes any sense at all yeah just whatever you get the feeling that like sometimes after r&d prints a set they just kind of like scoot one or two off to the side of the table and forget about them they're just like eh, yeah. yeah those are those are things we printed too i don't know i have legit for some reason looked at nature's blessing and thought that that was a card i need to put in a deck and i don't know why like well he, I, I actually put this into my banding deck, and this thing works like a champ with Squee. Yeah. Really? Because, okay, awesome. Yeah, I'll just pitch Squee, and if I don't want to give the guy banding, I can put counters on the guys, too. So you get more out of it than just you know the banding. There is extra stuff. Um, giving your guys tramples, not a bad idea. Right, exactly. And Squee always comes back, so he's perfect for this. Truth. Okay, well, then, I I don't know. The, the uh, I mean, the the art makes me confused. <laughs> yeah, I, I how think... is that confusing? She has laser fairy vision where she shoots fairy lasers out of her eyes. See, that's a, you're going with lasers, which I think is the most generous read on it. It looks to me like the fairies are pissing out of their feet into her eyes. Like that's what I get out of that. But. I mean, we'll go with laser fairies. So that well, sounds right. Are you really not getting that it's just fairy dust, like Tinkerbell style? Yeah. Yo, fairy dust doesn't come out of her ankles. Like that's not that's not a doesn't thing it? that happens. So I mean, okay. does it ever address that in the original? I'm pretty uh, sure. I mean, I I don't remember that in Peter Pan. You know, I don't remember like you know Tink ever just s straight up like shaking her toes at, at Peter Pan. But whatever, maybe I'm wrong. It's been a while. So. so what I take away from this is that fairies urinate through their feet. Yes. Hmm. That okay. is what and we've learned things today on Commander Cast. So that's why magic is a is a educational tool. Exactly. <laughs> um so speaking of banding strategy, <laughs> so is there anything else you guys wanna talk about as far as like how to incorporate this into your deck? Any other tips or anything else that we didn't cover yet? I think how is put some banding cards in there. Yeah, uh, but probably not the creature ones. Probably something that that grants banding to legitimately decent creatures to begin with. Gotcha. Helm um, of Chatsuk coming. I'd back. argue that if for a one drop and if it's got banding, uh, fire it in your deck. It's not that <laughs> big a deal. You know what I mean? Like if you're playing like a tribal soldiers or something like that, I'm sure one of these guys has got <clears throat> soldiers as a as a subtype. Oh yeah, yeah. Sure. I mean, like, I used to run, oh, what is, uh, what's that enchantment? It's a one drop enchantment, defensive formation that allows you to mess with combat math. Um, right. and so, okay, sure. Like, if, if I've done that, like, I'm kind of already doing that. You know, White Soldiers kind of does that anyway. Like, I would totally throw in formation, you know, the instant with banding just to, just to mess with stuff. So, sure, that sounds like a good plan. Yep. Yeah. Alrighty. Uh, well, I think that neatly puts a bow on our banding episode, or our banding st uh, strategy segment, rather. Um, coming back after the break, folks, uh, stick with us. We're going to talk about some of our favorite banding technology. So, stick with us.
I do wow, feel like defensive formation. I've never seen this. Yeah, I took it out because I, I realized I wasn't messing around with it as much. I was playing with that and uh, original Audric. Um, it's a mess around with combat math, and I was really just do like it just made my brain hurt after a while, so I took it out. So yeah, but this basically just says all your dudes have banding. Everyone has banding. Like when you when you get right down to yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad I've got four copies of this in one of my binders because it's going into everything now. Oh, well, there you go then. <laughs> That's this is the best. <laughs> That's, there we go. All right. I mean, hey, you know, this is what Commander Cast is about: coming together, talking about stuff. The problem I had with defensive formation is I couldn't drink and play that deck at the same time because then, you know, like that that card came out like third game. I'm already six beers in. Fuck that. I'm not doing that math in my head. <laughs> So, you know, that's uh, that's why that came out. So we had to. We I had, like the I like the picture too. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the art is pretty dope on that. So yeah, not as good as the again, not as good as the snow ostriches, but few nothing, things in life are. Nothing 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 snow ostriches. Ostriches. <laughs> yeah. All righty, yay technology. <laughs> And in technology this week, folks, right? you have waited long enough. Now it is time for us to share the secret banding tech that you came to this episode for. So, um, this week I have absolutely nothing. So I will just facilitate a conversation <laughs> <laughs> between Mike and Adam. There are a few weeks, folks, I want you to be, I, I just have to be honest that I throw in the towel. And this week is one. So, like, I just, I got nothing to add to this. I am fascinating. I am the learner. So... Uh, Mike, what is your first uh, secret tech for banding cards? I shouldn't say secret tech. It's not like secret. We've talked about it before, but so your yeah. favorite banding tech. So uh, my first one's Baton of Morale. And Baton of Morale is a two drop artifact that has pay two, give target creature banding. So what I like about this card, you can give your guys banding, or if you want to be a real asshole, yes. give it to one of the other players' guys. <laughs> just to mess with their math <laughs> well so let's say there's somebody who's dominating the board and they're coming they're coming hard at let's say not your opponent but one of the guys you're sitting beside and if you two work together you can take this dude down if you give one of his creatures banding now he gets to do the same combat tricks that you do and hopefully you can you guys can work together so the fact that it can target other people's creatures just to me is a bit better than only being able to target your own. Oh, huh. very cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Adam, what's your first card? My first card is also one that we have talked about, which is nature's blessing. Uh, but let's actually read what this, with this, uh, fairy urination. <laughs> that is true. We did, we did talk more <laughs> shit about the art in this card than we actually ever explained what this card does. So. so, uh, for two, a white and a green, you get an enchantment that says, uh, white green, choose and discard a card from your hand and have target creature gain banding, first strike, or trample, or get a plus one, plus one counter. Um, and I think all the ability, hold on. Oh. Uh, those are indefinite effects. Oh, whoa! Yeah, I was just reading the oracle for it because I I just noticed that it didn't say until end of turn. That gives trample indefinitely. Oh damn! Yeah, you're right. The the this ability has no duration. Yeah. Whoa. Wow! I that's gonna make the price of this card spike. <laughs> <laughs> like right now, it's twenty one cents. Probably go uh, easily oh, to twenty four uh, by the end of the day. People uh, spec yeah. on this card. So <laughs> Wow. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean so just just so that we're aware. It's not until end of turn. But um yeah, I mean I think this just gives you a lot of, you know, reach. And again, if you were to put it in something with like Soul Flare or something like that, then you can kind of reap the benefits of that as well as um, you know, using it with Squee, like Mike was suggesting. Uh, and in addition, I mean, it can give banding, which is probably one of the... I, I think that the the plus one, plus one counter is actually less relevant than banding. Um, but the trample is very, very important here, obviously. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think just the versatility and being able to activate it multiple times in a turn, etc., you know, it's a, it's a nice card. Again, something that grants banding, not necessarily something with banding. 
Sure. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay. Uh, Mike, what's your second card? Uh, my second one is... Where is my second one? Oh, Boros Reckoner. So this guy is a house with banding. Because you can take that, and when they trample, we had talked about this earlier, um, if you control how the, your opponent's putting that trample damage down, you can just dump all the trample damage onto Boros Reckoner. So not only does it have the ability to take out other people, but it's a good rattlesnake too. The guy's sitting on your table, and because people don't understand the combat math that you're, you're going to be pulling on them, they're probably just not going to attack you. That, to me, is a pretty handy ability. Yeah. Yeah, I do think Boros Reckoner gets overlooked an awful lot, and it, like it's a very powerful card that I don't think gets enough love lately. Agreed. I don't, I don't see it on many tables. I think mostly because of the first word in its name. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Aww. I Honestly, I was going through my, um, my uh, Ravnica binder looking for something else, and the page opened up to that, and my eyes just looked at it for a second and was like, nope, garbage. And then I thought about it again, and I was like, ah, Christ, I'll just throw it in the deck. Can't hurt. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm not like I'm building this to win money with. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was surprised it got a reprint in Modern Masters 2017. But, I I mean, because I don't remember it pl- being played that much in Modern. But then again, what the fuck I do I know no about it? Played it modern. Yeah, I, I, I mean, thought that there was a there was an infinite combo or something like that when it came out in standard, where you could like, if someone attacked you, you would just dump infinite damage back on them. I don't remember how it worked. I don't. Yeah, I, I do remember it making a big splash in in standard. I don't remember it being a big thing in modern. But again, yeah, just yeah. like Adam said, what the fuck do I know about modern? So I am literally talking out of my ass at this moment. <laughs> so, um, Adam, what is your next card? So my next one is Urza's Avenger. Yes. Uh, so for six mana, you have a 4-4 four, four artifact creature shapeshifter uh, that has the ability you can pay zero, and Urza's Avenger gets minus one, minus one, and gains your choice of banding, flying, first strike, or trample until end of turn. Uh, you can obviously use that multiple times in a turn if you wanted to get multiple abilities. Uh, I think that he ends up being like almost a wall that has a lot of reach to him. You know, like, he can give your entire team banding, essentially, because he'll get banding on the block. Like, he bans with all your guys, you know, put them on flying, and then redirect your damage to, like, your weakest guy that you don't care about when when you do damage, and he's still dealing a couple damage. Otherwise, he's just a 4-4 vanilla. He can fit in any deck, you know, because he is colorless. Uh, and it is a very cheap card as well. Yeah, I do uh, have to say for some the reason... OG is $2.95. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for some reason, I do own a playset of this card, and I'm not sure why. But I do play it in, like, Commander 95, and I kind of like it. I don't know. Maybe I have a soft spot for 4 fours for 6. I, <laughs> I think you have a soft spot for Amy Weber art. Yeah, well, that, oh, oh, this that is true. I, this is actually Amy Weber art that doesn't make me want to vomit. So that's <laughs> this is also a plus in the corner of Arz's Avenger. Um, I I often forget. In fact, I always forget this thing actually has banning because I use it for other things in in goofy decks when I'm doing dumb things with artifacts. But uh, I've never used the banning for it before. But I probably will now. So, yeah, yeah. Um, next one, uh, Mike. What do you got? Okay, I. I love this card. It's an oldie but a goodie, man. <laughs> it is. I played a pauper league with this guy as my commander. This is Abu Jafar. Nice. nice. Abu is a zero one, so right there, power. He's a zero one for one, and his uh, text says, "Whenever Abu dies, destroy all creatures blocked or blocked, or sorry, all creatures blocking or blocked by it, and they can't be regenerated." So. Here we got a dude, you stick him into a band of a couple other creatures, and you fire that team over to your opponents and dump all the damage on Abu. And so when he dies, all their guys die. It's perfect. Yeah. I I like this dude. I play him in, like, goofy graveyard decks occasionally. You know, like an Abzan graveyard deck, just for goofy reasons. You know, because he makes an amazing blocker. Or if I just want to have to, like... If I just destroy, like, uh, you know, if I, I throw him in with, with something else, like, I like him for other reasons, but you're right. Like, putting this guy in with banding seems like the best thing you could do with banding. 
So here's this here's a sneaky thing you can do. Okay, so put them into your band. Have all your guys have trample. Send them all over. Uh, your opponents declare the blockers. Kill Abu before uh, damage is declared. Now all their blockers are dead. Oh, and nice. All your trample just goes <laughs> straight through. Yes. Using that the spot acceptor to kill your own permanents. I like it. I wouldn't even do that. I would just like goblin bombardment him. <laughs> well, yeah, but then you don't get to use the sp- spot acceptor. No, no. Uh, of course. <laughs> True, um, my bad. Yeah, obviously. I think, Mike, did you forget what, what podcast you're on for a minute? Come on now. Yeah, so, for a yeah. minute. There. Why the use Goblin thing I love about the art on this guy is, like, he just, he looks, he looks so evil. Like, he's just finished dropping off a suitcase full of bombs somewhere. Like, this guy looks, he's the penultimate terrorist. I mean, so the, the one thing that I that I dislike about the errata on this is because I think that, that the original typing makes it seem like he's not necessarily a terrorist. He he, he was a summon leper. Yeah, definitely. Oh. He's literally like <laughs> dying of leprosy. Yeah, he's like, and he's like That's in the why water he's supply. His face. Yeah, yeah. Not and why his hands all guilt. mangled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if if you look at the original Arabian Arts um like uh, rules text, it's my favorite. Like because it's one of those old rules texts that yeah. you know was simplified to two sentences, but is a fucking paragraph in the original. Um, it is <laughs> it is definitely look, worth a look, man. Like they didn't even they fixed it even for Chronicles and somehow managed to make it the same size, but only by like doubling the font size. So <laughs> it's it's to- it's the best. Like yeah, it, yeah. P- play Abu Jafar like. Obviously, we don't pick up the Arabian Nights version for four bucks. Like, just pick up the Chronicles for twenty two cents. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah, but Wait throw them in there. That's only four bucks. Oh, I'm placing an order tonight. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, couple more helms of Chatzuk and some Abu Jafars. We're getting there. I don't think I need any more helms of Chatzuk. <laughs> yeah, enough. I actually don't even know if I have one anymore. Oh, Christ, I'll give you some. I have, I kid you not, I probably have three or four of those. Just like, I've been, I probably use them as coasters in, back in the day. So. Oh, I went through my fourth edition binder last night and, uh, couldn't find any. And I'm like, I've seen this card a million times. And like, the only time you're ever going to see this is in a binder. Yeah. Right. And, and so I'm like, I've seen it a million times. Where the hell did it go? So I, I opened up my third edition and there was one sitting there and I was like, okay, how did I not have this in fourth? Like I bought yeah, so right? many of those cards. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that thing was definitely like revised chaff. I mean, I, yeah. I remember going through so many of those fucking cards, you know, even back in the day. So, yeah, uh, yeah it was, um, it is bad, but you know, whatever. So we, at least we found a, a home for it somewhere. Uh, Adam, yeah. what's your third card? So my next card is one that we've talked about already. It is the attack of the snow ostriches, <laughs> otherwise known as formation. So formation is one in a white for an instant that says target creature gains banding until end of turn. Draw a card at the beginning of next turn's upkeep. So it replaces itself, and it's probably going to blow somebody out combat math-wise. I actually think, out, out of all the ones that we've talked about, Baton of Morale and Formation are 100% playable cards. Like, you can definitely blow somebody out with Formation. Yeah. Uh, and Baton of Morale is just going to make people question all over the place whether they should attack you or not, because they have no idea what's what can happen. They're like, I think you can do something silly with it. Don't know, not going to bother. <laughs> Very cool. I I just love the fact that I mean I don't know that I don't know for a fact that this is how like wizards art happens, but I ima- imagine that like you know you commission an artist, you tell them what the name of the card is, and you're like, hey, just go for this. You know, I love that yeah. this like of all the things you could think of for a formation in a card game, that the snow ostrich was what he landed on, and like I love the way they used to do the old art. Like some of the things in the art had no relevance to what the card was about but now yeah. when you when you look at the art they've made a concerted effort to really ensure that the art reflects the story yeah, yeah. they have reined you know. it in a bit yeah yeah i don't know i don't know what the method was before but now i mean they they show what some of the art descriptions are now and they give them a pretty clear like we want this in the foreground this is the focus we want this kind of tone to it 
Yeah. You know, like they actually it, give them all that now. I don't think that happened before. Like no, time walk was probably not a good description. You think? You think Ken Meyer Jr. was not looking at the uh, the overall story of Ice Age when he was doing the snow ostriches? He's like, but well, man. when you look at any of the Drew Tucker art, like that yeah. to me was the the the, the art of you know, my youth. And I would look at these cards. It didn't make any sense, but it was, they were cool pictures. Yeah, absolutely. And so you, it's just like when you read a book and you, you apply what you think the characters are going to look like in your head to, to the narrative of the story. And it was the same thing for when I'd look at these art and, um, I would I'd look at the pictures and go, oh, okay, well, you know, these are the cave people and that sort of stuff. But now it's, the art is laid out for you. This is what it is. And th- yeah. here's Jace because he's in every fucking card. You know, he's lurking in the background. I don't I don't like that anymore. I don't get to add my take on on what the cards should look like. I mean, yeah, they did, they did I, smooth I it out. Don't like, yeah. I don't like how the art has gone like in a in a very specific direction instead of having whether you like them or not, like the diversity of, you know, f- the folios and Drew Tucker. I love Drew Tucker's artwork uh, and Robert Bliss. You know, along with some of the ones that have stuck around for a long time. I, I miss the fact that we have all that stylization. I mean, yeah. you don't get a, as many as that. Like, I don't. I think of it as like smoothing out a wave pattern. You know, like you don't get as many highs, you don't get as many lows. Like, I'm sorry, someone on this fucking cast, go ahead and defend Mishra's War Machine. Just go, just go try. You know, like that is just garbage. What the fuck is that? You know, and like you, you have the Amy Webbers at the bottom and, and the folios, and then you have some of the really cool Drew Tucker stuff at the top, which I really like too. Um, and this is, this is all, we're just coming to the eventual head for the art episode, people. Like we've been talking about this forever, but, <laughs> no, but I, I do think, you know, sometimes you get cool little things. Like I like how all of the weird enchantments from the last commander set had like that weird hipster douchebag dying and in interesting ways on every single card you know like i like how they, they throw in some little things but you're right it is much more directed sometimes it's much I'll more agree beautiful. With you. like those those hipster guy cards that's those were cool there was a little cycle of them but when you look at the style of the art there's really nothing that differentiates that art from an art by another artist yeah it is it, very they're all pretty yeah. derivative everybody looks the same yeah whereas right. you're playing in fourth edition and you're you're busting out the folios and then you're taking out, um, oh, Richard Kane Ferguson. You put those two cards side by side, yeah, and you're yeah. like, okay, so this <laughs> is from one game, and this is from something else. But it's the same game, and it's got so much, and it appeals to different people, right? Yeah, I mean, you would never, you know, you would never slide the the skeletons on turtles in skeleton ship by the art department nowadays, you know, <laughs> um, for better or worse. But hey, and, and I mean, you still had some of your like amazing artists that are still around, like Therese Nielsen, and you know, but um, yeah, I, I agree. I, I I have nostalgia for the differentiation there, but <laughs> let's move on from that. I would like to I would like to interject one thing here about yeah. skeleton ship. Uh, we were playing <laughs> one day and I had skeleton ship out because I had built myself a, a pirate tribal deck. This was nice. before pirates were actually a thing. Yep. And uh, my opponent puts down um, Skullbriar. Hmm. <laughs> and so I tapped skeleton ship and put a minus one minus one counter on Skullbriar. And since Skullbriar keeps his counters, Skullbriar never came onto the fucking battlefield. Again. <laughs> That's amazing. That is, there we go. That is Skeleton ship wins the day. I I would have never even thought of that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Skeleton ship for the win. Yes. Yeah. Now, you see, like that's a true commander cast story right there. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, you, go. you know, I will be honest, gentlemen. We got off track, and I have no idea who's next. But please, somebody uh, go. It's Mike. <laughs> Is it it's- me? Okay. Yeah. So for me, the next one would be Squee Goblin the Bob. Uh, Squee works great with Nature's Blessing because now we can pitch Squee to Nature's Blessing and then do it again next turn and the turn after that. Um, like I was saying earlier, Squee is a pet card of mine. I try to jam into everything. But the other great thing about Squee is that if you band him to anybody else, you dump all the damage onto Squee, Squee dies, and then Squee comes back the next turn. So as opposed to having to put a token generator into your deck um, or actually maybe lose one of your not bad banders, um, just get rid of Squee. And then he comes back. He's the guy's a sucker for punishment. 
Very true. But nice. And, I don't and have the enough. new art for Squee is way better than the old art. That is true. I don't play enough Squee. Like every time I look at that card, I'm like, man, I need to put more Squee in my life. So yeah. I, I think they're pretty cheap. You can get them. For- oh, they're wicked. Yeah, it's not. I think I own at least one copy of that card. It's just for some reason I don't know. Like I just don't. Either I don't put them in decks, or like when I'm messing around with graveyards, I'm usually not doing it in red. You know, so hmm, I don't there know. you go. He was uh, he was released in Modern Masters, so Wizards obviously thinks this card is super powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> or they fill half of Modern Masters with garbage, some things that make it playable in draft, and then a couple things to actually sell it. Nonsense. What are you talking about? I don't understand. <laughs> this is not. I don't, know, I, will, I don't know where you're from, but that doesn't make sense. Exactly, yeah. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, Adam, enough with your crazy conspiracy theories about Watsy. Jesus. Uh, what's your Sometimes force- they'll even tell you it's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> next <laughs> all right so my next one is uh i mean i'm not gonna have a whole lot to say about it just because mike really talked about boros reckoner which this is almost the same card uh which is spite mare so spite mare is two a hybrid boros and a hybrid boros for a elemental creature that's a three three uh, and whenever spite mare is dealt damage it deals that much damage to target creature or player so Literally use him in the exact same tactics you use Boros Reckoner. Holy shit, I didn't even know this was a thing. Are you serious? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this yeah is the, I have. The I, I own one. one. Perfect. <laughs> so, like, putting that in the deck this afternoon. I do feel like, like, Spite Mare is a card that most people own, even if they forget they own it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's just somehow turned up in a couple of things. It was in a pre-con. I think it was in maybe the original pre-cons. Um, it was in a Johnny versus Nicol Bolas. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, I mean, it's this is stupid because I don't have Spite Me right in front of me, but it's a horse, right? Like, this is totally a horse. No, it's an elemental horse. Yeah. Oh, well, as long as it has horse. It actually doesn't even have horse. It just no. looks like a horse. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Because I was going to say, I'm like, does it work with Crested Sun Mare? Because then it would make it a lot better, but I guess not. It's kind of like a Patronus. Yeah, fuck that. So... <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then, fuck you, spite Mary. Now I'm spiteful about you. Goddamn, whatever. Elemental. Um, if you if you zoom right in, he's got a little goatee as well. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so I, maybe I did not know that art that. is actually really sweet. I do yeah, like that I, art. I, the more I look at it, the more I'm like, this is pretty okay. Like I, I don't mind this, and it's only four casting costs, so it's not like you're breaking the bank to put this thing down. Yeah, now. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. I like. There's another. There's another card that does this too, but I think it's a mono red card. Uh, is it like Coal or Swine or something like that? Yeah, there, oh there's a, yeah. <clears throat> um, but so so any of those cards that have that ability that you're able to dump it, you know, Stuffy Doll falls into that category. And, oh no no no. No, Mike. Mike, do we lose Mike? Do we lose Mike? Did Spite Mare take out Mike? Oh my goodness. Oh Jesus. <laughs> That is, that is a truly spiteful mare. I take it back. It really is. All so, right. Uh, so, and oh no, sorry, folks. The uh, the internet has conspired to uh, destroy Mike. Um, he was dropping too much hot knowledge about banding, and then I mean the real problem was that he didn't have banding. And, and that's, so that's we true. All attack the podcast as a band, and then our all of our feeds would have gone down all at once. So yeah. Um, well, I guess that's good then. Yeah. yeah. Or you know maybe he we didn't have banding and then Mike took you know took one for the team. We redirected the damage all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've we've redirected all the damage to Mike. Um, wow. It's very unfortunate, but that's the kind of guy Mike is. He takes one for the team and uh, we keep going on. So uh, thank you, Mike, for uh, for coming out. It was awesome to have you on this week, man. And uh, we yeah. will get we will get up at when the internet no longer is spiteful towards you. So um, with that, folks, we're just going to move straight on into the outro. That's it this week, folks. We have banded together. We have w- withstood the assault. Uh, once again, you know, Mike took all the damage for us, um, mm-hmm. which is very kind of him. So if you want to send condolence messages to Mike and thank him for coming out because he did an awesome job today and we're super happy he was able to come on, uh, you can hit him up on Reddit, MTG Metaman on there is his user handle. 
And uh, you can blast all of us out here at CommanderCast, CommanderCast at gmail.com, or at Twitter at CommanderCast. Adam, if they want to tell you why snow ostriches are the best art in all of art, uh, mm. we're going to hit you up. Uh, definitely hit me up on Twitter at Squire9999 or at the Trinosphere. Yules. And be sure to check out our Commander Cast Facebook page, folks, and uh, band together with us and talk about whether or not... I would be super interested to, to learn if anyone else has messed around with banding. They have to. Like, Oh, yeah, I'm sure there's people out there who have played with it. Yeah, like, if you have cool banding stories, let us know, folks, because I am now officially in the banding train. Still fuck flanking, so 100%. That's, um, <laughs> that's still my position. I have not changed on that. But Mike and Adam definitely turned me around on banding, at least. So, um, with that, uh, big thanks to everyone here at the Commander Cast Network, and we will see you guys next week with more community strategy and then whatever random old mechanic we have dug up out of, out of the, the vaults. So, yeah. until then, let's get it! Thank you.